Hello everyone, let's take a look at a spherical joint and how can we set it up in Femap. This geometry was created in SolidWorks, we saved it as a parasolid and then imported it into Femap. Okay, and now we're gonna take a look at what can we do to set it up to have only the proper motions that are required effective in this geometry. This would uh, block all translational motion, right? XYZ mo translational motions are blocked, but XYZ rotational motions are still active, and that's what we need to set up. First, let's set up our uh, material and then some uh, properties. So, material, I'm gonna call it M1, um, let's see, 70E9. 0.33 and some density, maybe there you go. Okay, uh, cancel. We can double check material M1 was created. Very good. Now let's set up uh, one of our properties model property. I'm gonna call it solid solids and uh, I'm gonna pick the material. These are two solid bodies, so I'm going to create a solid element, solid properties. Okay, and that should be it. Okay, cancel, I'll double check. Yep, there it is. Good. Now let's go ahead and seed our mesh. Mesh control, size on solid. Let's do this one first. The tetrahedral mesh isn't the default works. And not mesh, mesh control on solid. This guy now. Okay. Uh, same thing. Okay. Now, uh, let's see. Well, let's get a mesh. Mesh a solid. Pick both. Okay. Um, tetrahedral mesh, and I'm gonna leave the mid size nodes checked for now. Uh, this is in theory, remember when we learned. Uh, if you have an element, you have the beginning and the end point, i and j, then you would have linear functions. If you have this, this is the midpoint node, so instead of just having i and j, you also have a k at the midpoint, so you wouldn't use uh, like this, you use the linear shape functions, if you click it on, you would use the more uh, accurate or more precise, uh, something like the quadratic shape functions okay so there's a little, little theory review and click ok that should do it there you go there's our mesh let's see where's my elements by tape solids and all right here turn on the mesh turn off the solid there you go we have our mesh created now it's time for us to set up our rigid body element for the joint. So let's go ahead and uh, go to element, type, select the rigid, OK. And we're going to select new node at the center, which doesn't exist yet. We'll, Femap will create it after we pick all the dependent nodes. I'm going to color these, uh, let's see, nice green. Good. Uh, these ones all checked that's fine this this one if you don't know this is means that what motions do we want the dependent uh, nodes to copy from the independent one okay I want all of them to be copied so there you go they are all checked now let's go ahead and pick our nodes so let's go ahead and oh we don't have the hold on let me let's do the ge geometry there you go so I want, let me start with this one. Let's start with this one. So I want to pick the nodes on a surface and all the surfaces that are inside here. That one, now the other side, this one, this one. Did I pick everything? Highlight it and check. See, I missed one right there. I need that one too. Actually, I missed two. I need that one as well. Highlight it again to update and looks like we finally got all of them. Good. That's exactly what I wanted. Good. Okay. 
the old node at the center and click OK. Now for the second one, node, and uh, for this one I'm going to hide this one and highlight this one. And I'm going to pick the surfaces on this guy right here. Uh, that doesn't look picked. That one, that one, that one, and that one. Did I nail all of them? Looks like, yep. Alright, good. Okay, so this is my second one. Uh, let me change the color so we can kind of differentiate them. Let's give it a red. Okay, and that should do it. Okay, and yes. Now, if we hide and turn this one on, let's uh, get a, a hide the solid element. Then, here you go. You can see the two rigid body spiders. Man, that looks cool. I like it. <laughs> the two rigid body spiders within each other. And if you zoom into this chaos, you can kind of tell what's very important. See our two masters. One was created here and the other one was created here. This is not good. We need to make sure that they are geometrically coincident. If we don't, then the uh, the joint will not work properly. So we need to make sure to move them to be in the same place. To achieve this, let's go to modify move to and node to location and we're gonna let's zoom in real good to make sure we don't accidentally select something else they click it okay and enter coordinate or select with cursor where do we want to move it so we're gonna move it to the location of the other master which is right here Come on. Uh, the on node. There you go. That's where we want it. Okay. Yes. Okay. And there you have it. Now, as you can even tell, the the two uh, nodes are nicely at the same location. You don't see two origins for this chaos ball over here. <laughs> it does look nice. I like it. And now let's uh, let's go ahead and uh, find their identities to make sure we have them for later because it's gonna be handy. So list uh, to the, the model node. Let's do a box select here to here. Let's see. I hope we didn't select more than one ID. Did we select more than one? No. Awesome. So these are our two masters right here. Well, the, knowing this ID will be handy in a minute. Now let's go ahead and uh, connect the two masters that we have with a spring. Okay, that's how we're gonna have the two related to each other. So I'm gonna go to model property. I'm gonna call it uh, spring. There you go. Element of uh, the generalized simple spring damper click it right here is the seabush kind and what do we have here so in, in a, this is a spherical joint right so that means the six degrees of freedom that we work with the translation in XYZ rotation in XYZ so we want to make sure that the first three are very hard to achieve and the last three are very easy to achieve so therefore we're gonna enter very high values to the first three of the stiffnesses and I'm gonna leave these three as a zero and then I'm gonna go ahead and do a, a normal modes analysis and we'll see that we will be able to interpret that the right or the correct uh, degrees of freedom were left uh, in not blocked so to say the three rotations okay so okay cancel that out and if we zoom in we, we can turn the solid elements off the rigids and uh, oh no mind we didn't create it yet we created the property we need to create the element now so let's uh, go ahead and model element 
pick the spring property that we just picked, we just created, and make the connection between our two masters. So uh, this is where this was useful. It's kind of hard to pick it out of here, and especially that they are on top of each other. So now that we had this over here, we can just simply enter it by hand. So 12, 2, 4, and the other one is 12, 2, 5. Very good. Okay. And we create it. And in case you want to double check it, this is what I wanted to go uh, before. Uh, da -da, click the rigid, and there you go. You can see the symbol of the spring element, so you can confirm that it was created. Good, good, good. Let's turn these back on. And we can turn this one back on as well. These. Now we can have everything. Now let's go ahead and restrain, put a constraint on this wall, and we'll do a normal mode analysis to see how, what kind of results we get. So constraint on surface, boundary condition, okay, method, okay, why you, let me pick, oh, because we don't have the geometry active. There you go. Maybe I should uh, highlight them. There you go. Good. So this one I'm going to call it the wall. Fixed is good. Okay. Oh, no. I should have said cancel. Good. Okay. So that's all good. Now let's go ahead and go to model analysis new. Call it uh, whatever. Two. Just fine. And here pick normal modes eigenvalue okay analyze and it's going to check for the first 10 frequent natural frequencies that this uh, setup has and it's going to find it for us if we didn't do any errors then it should be all good there you go complete very good close this now let's go to results all result there you have it we have our first uh, 10 natural frequencies of this system. Now what do we need to look for? We left uh, the rotation around all three axes as uh, very uh, easily achievable, right? So it should be happening. So for that, let's look at the first three modes that we can see here. And you can tell that they are way, 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 way smaller than the rest of them. Like this one, the next one is 120, 123. But these three, they are near zero. So these are near zero of natural frequencies, which means they are free to move. And if we click and animate, let's turn the mesh back on, then we can visualize them. Let me turn off the geometry. We can visualize them, the uh, rotations that we allowed to occur and therefore it is uh, confirming that we achieve what we wanted. And the third one... Ah, this one's rotating around the Z. So left, right, left, right. Very good. Because see if you go to the number four one, this is not a rigid body mutation anymore. This one is uh, flexing and bending. Okay, this is uh, not a rigid, uh, not a near zero rigid body motion. Good. So there you go, first three. So this is why it's good to do a normal modes analysis on your structure. It can help you uh, figure out if you have anything, maybe you don't want anything moving. If uh, you don't want any kind of motion, everything should be fixed, then you better not have any uh, natural frequencies that are near zero. All of them should be way above a zero. Okay, if you have anything close to zero, that means something's uh, moving, something's loose, something is spinning, translating, doing something that it shouldn't be. Okay, so there you have it. This is our spherical joint setup. Thank you guys for watching. Like and subscribe, and tune in for the next one.